What's up, guys? Welcome to uh, Thought Factory. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, what we do here on Thought Factory is we watch Star Citizen, uh, or Inside Star Citizen, uh, for the first time. I have been kind of lagging behind. I'm trying to get caught up. Uh, hopefully I can. Uh, but anyways, let's hop, go ahead and hop right into it. Uh, a Siege Upon Us. This is an older episode, by the way. The last episode of the quarter, the patch is just around the corner, and speaking of which, what's in this quarter's Alpha 317-2 anyway? Let's recap in this quarter's patch report. Up first, let's start with some character items. So, these are my favorite armors. I love these armors. Um, they're my absolute favorite. Um, in my org, uh, uh, Paladin Corporation, what we do is uh, we're trying to make these probably our security armor. So, you know, the one on the left or right will be like our standard uniform with like a yellow uh, yellow shoulders. And then this one in the middle right here is going to be like our officer uniform. Uh, I think it's a really cool idea for like uh, organizations and whatnot. But yeah, these armors I absolutely love. Items. And these new variants of the RRS Specialist Heavy Armor More coming to Alpha 317-2, including this traditional camo variant, an Arctic variant, and perhaps my personal favorite, the Radiation Resistant Fallout variant. There's also a new Grey Cat backpack specifically for the purpose of collecting salvage in preparation for when that day arrives. Yeah, that's cool. I'm glad they got. And for subscribers, for here's it. a blast from Star Citizen's past with a look at the exploration-themed vintage spacesuit commemorating RSI's first commercial spaceship, the Zeus. That's a cool. Be spaceship. sure you keep an eye out for that when it becomes available in the coming months. And in the space above Microtech and ArtCorp, you'll discover a number of new space stations being added that will make travel to and from the Stanton Classics easier than ever before while adding additional visual flare through gas clouds at the Lagrange points, similar to those found around other planets. With so much of the focus on the upcoming pyro these days, it's important to keep refining and improving the locations of Stanton, and that includes the addition of more medical rooms at Grimhex, because with all the recent player pirate activity, it was causing a bit of a traffic jam at times. Adding additional hangar exteriors for rest stops, enabling the addition of more small. So now everybody, or uh, I say everybody, um, everyone uh, has a you know uh, when they go to like a, a spaceport, uh, they have these hangars now. You where you used to, you just had pads. Uh, I like it a lot better. Um, it's to try to prevent pad ramming, even though people can still. You know, they can still technically pad ram you in here, but uh, but it's a little bit harder to do so. Uh, so I like that. And medium hangers for ships to these locations and the ability to summon and store a greater variety of spacecraft along the way. And down on the surface of our planets, the beginnings of our derelict outpost rollout, starting with these relics of past life in the verse on Microtech. I haven't seen a whole lot of these. I personally haven't done a whole lot. Of Designed these. to create more opportunities for exploration, missions, loot, and the like. Three seventeen. But these will be cool for like when they come out for players. When players can build stuff like this, um, you know, hopefully players will be able to find a derelict and be able to add on to it and make it their own. That would be awesome. Two will find several here, at like. I could see this in the future. So, like, let's say that I'm exploring, an, you know, an unknown uh, planet on the farthest reaches of the system, and I end up crashing. Uh, my favorite thing would be like a survival situation. So now I've crashed, I've got to survive. You know, uh, maybe my rescue beacon is busted up. You know. Um, so now I've got to survive on here. So, you know, what I do is now I've got to, uh, it turns into a survival game. So now I've got to find, you know, stuff to eat or maybe get wood to, you know, add on to my derelicts. Kind of like this tower right here, 
you know, stuff like that. That would be awesome. And then maybe, you know, your friends can come, they can find you, and then you can make like a base out of it, a little mini base or whatnot. That I'm looking forward to. As more are added in subsequent patches throughout the remainder of this year. And speaking of missions, Alpha 317-2 has additions and refinements galore, starting with the revamp of the Combat Assist Service Beacon system, aiming to provide a more natural progression for players from fighting Tiny Aurora all the way up to massive Idrises, or Idri, or Idro, I don't know. There's also more collecting... I do, I want to talk about uh, this real quick. The Hammerhead... You know, I'm just looking at this, and this is off topic of the the Inside Star Citizen. Uh, the Hammerhead has become, in my opinion, it, it's useless. It's garbage. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because, you know, a si like a size 9, one size 9 can take out the Hammerhead. Um, I do think that they need to have some sort of better um, counters to um torpedoes uh you know i get it torpedoes are supposed to uh you know strike bigger ships corvette ships and destroy them but uh could you imagine you know especially in the future maybe in the future they will you know maybe they will have better decoys or maybe they'll have a ship that needs to escort the hammerhead you know that can you know, is specifically meant to jam torpedoes or, you know, and then that way the attacking force, their objective would be to take out that, uh, that ship before they could actually take out the hammerhead. Um, but right now, in my opinion, uh, hammerheads are useless. Uh, they get one shotted by a torp. Uh, the counter defenses, so like decoys, flares, uh, chafe, whatever you want to call them, um, they do not do much. You know, you, you, it's hard to to escape a torpedo. But uh, but yeah, and I know you can shoot the torpedoes. Um, even then, even with a fully manned hammerhead, it's still hard uh, because what can happen is you've got people that don't even have to lock onto you. Uh, they're good enough to where they can just fly by you, release a torpedo, and hit you with it. You know, they, they don't even have to lock on. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, I don't know. It's, I think the Hammerhead's in a weird place right now. It's not really a good ship anymore. There's also more collect and delivery mission progression for the dedicated criminal element and those who maybe just want a little more scratch by stepping just outside the lines of the law sometimes. And then there's the new crashed reclaimer derelict settlements, which come I've with a variety of, of new missions requiring they players to explore, attack, defend, and otherwise experience the majesty of these fantastic new locations made possible with help from the next major milestone from our AI team, Dynamic Planetary Nav Mesh which will allow mission designers to begin adding NPC life to not just these new derelicts, but any other curiosities you might And the, the, the AI have been still pretty garbage, from what I understand. They still don't respond really well. They're still very sluggish. Um, I guess they have improved some, but I don't think they've improved a lot uh, from what I, you know, what I gather. Um, they have came out with a few hot fixes, so maybe that will fix, uh, their response time, but I don't, I doubt it. You might find on the surface of Stanton's planets and moons. And if you thought the crashed reclaimers were the only new derelicts to explore on Alpha 317-2, be sure you head out into the farthest reaches of Stanton and discover for yourself a host of new mission content linked to these brand new space-bound derelicts included in this quarter's patch as well. Then finally, the big mammer jammer dynamic event of them all so far, the Siege of Orizon is bringing with it an FPS event the likes of which has never been attempted in Star Citizen, pitting players against the criminally industrialist Ninetales in a battle to decide how Orizon should be pronounced. Is it Orizon or Orizon? Potato, tomato, we may never know, 
but the battle across this new expansion to the Orizon Landing Zone will be an involved one with many, many fronts. Can you tell I recorded the patch report at a different time? But while we're talking about the Siege of Orizon, while we do want to leave most of its twists and turns for you to discover on your own, we did ask Luke and Elliot from the Mission Feature Team for some helpful hints to this year's major event. Let's see what they had to say in a segment that we're calling Siege of Orizon Top 10 Pro Tips. This event is like nothing you've experienced in Star Citizen so far. You will need to prepare. You will need ammo, weapons, armor. Otherwise, you will not make it out alive. This being, um, like I said, this being old, uh, from what I under, from what I understand is, again, I didn't go to Siege of Orson. This is all from what I've heard. Uh, I'm just not really and truthfully. I'm not into those types of events. I like Jump Town, but uh, I don't. Man, Siege of Orson didn't really catch my attention. But anyways, uh, it was a disaster. Uh, there was a bunch of bugs. Um, you know, which they came out with hot fixes for supposedly now, and they're going to run it again. But uh, but it was it it was a disaster. It it didn't run as good as they I guess hoped it would. Uh, but I do enjoy the hundred player caps uh, on the servers. That's that's awesome. For this event, we have a iffy, which is the identifier friend or foe inverter. And basically what that does is that's going to turn the platform's turrets onto the side of the Ninetales. It also affects the restricted area, so you won't be able to fly your ship in. These are, new platforms are huge, um, and we have done the, the best we can to sign these and put maps up all over the place that show you, like, you are here. You'll find signage all around that shows you where shuttles are to get between the islands. However, they are slightly different to how shuttles uh, currently work. They're more like elevators in that you have to call them to your location. And I, you still, get in, you I still think the shuttles are stupid. Uh, to me, again, I mentioned the Disney ride. It felt like a Disney ride. I mean, you know, if Ninetales took over this platform, why are they still allowing these shuttles? They've got the anti-air system, but they're not. the anti-air system aren't shooting the shuttles bringing, you know mercenaries in to take them out you know it it didn't make no sense there was no like special like secret op mission where you know you had to secret you know knock out some kind of radar so that you could come in and you know sneak in and and then it, it, it i don't know it just made no sense to me that's one reason why i don't like it you have to send them to the next location so be aware of that you can't get to all the islands via the shuttles, but we've put enough toys around to allow you to get there a different way. So there are various locked containers all over the island. You'll need a code to get into them. Make sure to check them all because they have a multitude of surprises. We've added a maze uh, in this somewhere. Uh, just remember that you can't jump as far when you're wearing heavy armor. This event might take a while, so don't forget to loot your fallen enemies. We decided we weren't going to hold the player's hand in this mission. There are a lot of optional secret objectives that players will have to figure out for themselves. With combat assist service beacons, illegal collect and delivery missions, a variety of new missions and NPC opportunities embedded in the new Reclaimer derelicts, the Siege of Auras and, and more, Alpha 317-2 may have the numbering of just a little tiny point patch, but there's a whole bunch of new gameplay packed with it. Now that about does it for this quarter's ISE, but keep an eye on the robertspaceindustries.com website for details on the release of Alpha 317-2 while we're on our regularly scheduled hiatus. And uh, when we come back, maybe we'll do so from inside the new performance capture stage being built right next door. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee, closing out once more from the very noisy ninth floor of the Manchester Goods Yard building. And this is where I'm told Aaron Roberts' office is going to be. So let me just clean these windows here a bit. We'll see you all next month. Thank you, Jared. 
So again, you know, uh, trying to catch up, but uh, yeah, that was that was all right. It was short and sweet. Um, uh, you know, again, I didn't like. Uh, I didn't even want to participate in CJ Orson. Uh, jump down, I'll participate in. I love it. Me and the org, we try to get together and do that. But that, no. All right, guys, thank you for watching Thought Factory. Uh, hit the like, you know, uh, subscribe, share, and uh, you guys have a good one.